As we get started, let's first look at a few examples of collage from artists throughout history. First is Mary Delaney, who is often credited as being the first artist to work in collage, a process she called paper mosaic. She hand painted and dyed papers and intricately cut them to create these astonishing pieces in the late 1870s and in her 70s. Hannah Hawk is a Dada artist who has also used the process of collage, assembling and reassembling absurd images to play with the key concepts of Dada. But even though her work is about the absurd, um, notice how like Delaney, she's still making intricate and precise cuts. That is very important to collage. And lastly, Danielle Crissa, AKA the Jealous Curator, has made collage a large part of her practice, carefully cutting images from different types of popular culture magazines and combining them with different brush strokes um, and oftentimes baubles and other jewels to make comments about contemporary society. I really love this one. So as all three of those artists have shown us from the 18th century to today, we need to make good cuts. So the first thing you should consider is working with a sharp X-Acto blade. I prefer this over scissors because you can cut much more intricately. So what I'm doing, unfortunately off camera, yeah, I'm human after all, is making sure I have a sharp blade to begin with. So once I have a sharp blade, I can go through my different collage materials and it's always good to have a selection and decide which one I want to start with. So again, I'm going to work with the sharp blade. I'm going to change it out frequently. As soon as I notice that the blade is tearing, i.e. ripping the paper rather than cutting it smoothly, I will change blades. You will just have to pay attention to the cuts to know when this happens. There's no exact rule. So notice once I select my piece, how I cut with it. Um, the X-Acto knife, which I will assume most of you have used before, but let's just chat about it, is held much like a pencil and I pull it towards myself. I don't have to add a tremendous amount of pressure, but I can carefully trace around the contours of what I'm wanting to cut. And I will keep going along the entire shape, just carefully working, um, using the tip when need be for delicate detail. And again, I'm not bearing down hard. If you're having to bear down hard, then that's typically a sign that you have a dull blade and you need to change it out. Now let's watch that really quickly. Also make sure you're cutting on a surface that does not dull your blade. I'm working on a self-healing mat. You could work on a piece of cardboard or something of that nature, whatever you have available. So of course we can cut pieces out from the interior, which can allow for a lot of fun things to do. You can see with this piece, I could glue this down and draw something on the inside or work with these takeaways that now feel like eyeballs to me or amoebas. So be creative and be sensitive um, with all the materials and items that you have available to work with for collage. Sometimes spontaneity gives you the best results. And of course, sometimes you need to cut a straight edge. So to do that, just work with your ruler. I went through that really fast, so let's watch it again and talk our way through it. Okay, so in order to cut a straight edge, I hold my ruler down firmly um, and push the tip of the blade both down and cut the paper and towards the ruler at the same time. This works best with a metal ruler um, so with wood and plastic, you can actually start to cut into the ruler, whereas with metal, you really can't do that. So once you've started cutting, you may want to assemble several items to work with, and it can be fun to have different shapes and forms. 
You may want to cut some items clearly, or you can see from my example here on my cutting board, some I have torn. I just want to always work with intention and the edges should suggest and work well with all of the qualities of the drawing. Okay, let's look at all the items you need to assemble to make a good collage. Um, here on my working surface, you see I have my collage elements planned in place on the drawing paper. I have a bottle of white glue. Now, when I'm working in my studio, I use PVA, polyvinyl acetate. But Elmer's School Glue, the stuff you can pick up at Target, CVS, or the grocery store, works as well. Okay, so other than the glue, I have some scrap sheets of paper that will help contain the mess and allow me to get glue all over the back of my collage elements. I have a bristle brush to apply the glue, um, a jar to pour it in, and what you can't see is my folding bone. You need something to apply some pressure. So a folding bone, a butter knife, a plastic knife, a bottom of a vitamin bottle, anything. All right, let's jump in. I'm gonna pour a little bit of that glue, like the Elmer's or similar bland white glue, into a glass jelly jar to make it easier to work with. I also have several sheets of scrap paper ready as well. This will help me to keep things nice and neat as I go through the process. So make sure you have that on hand. The first step is to make some marks so that I know exactly once I have glue on this collage piece where I'm going to put it. I'm going to load my brush with a little bit of glue and wipe off the excess. So you don't want too much. I'm starting from the center and I'm working my way out. This is why I'm on that scrap sheet of paper so I can brush the glue all the way to the edges. This is the only way you can get it to glue down firmly all the way to the edge. Okay, once I have that over the entire surface, I'm just gonna make sure I'm gonna keep brushing out to the edges. You can see how I'll hold things down delicately and gingerly with my fingers. I will lightly pick that up and carefully move it over and lay it down in the place where I've made those little marks on my paper with graphite. There we go. Once I have the collage element in place, I use my fingers to gently smooth it down. This is the first step. If any excess glue comes out, I'm going to wipe it away. Then I pick up my folding bone, or you could use a butter knife um, or plastic knife, um, to gently burnish. Gluing something down is always the adhesive and pressure, so this burnishing is crucial, but be gentle. Okay, as I'm burnishing again, let me reiterate, it's firm but gentle pressure to help make sure this element really sticks in place. Um, and use whatever tools you can find that are smooth and firm. Then I'm gonna fold this scrap sheet of paper that has the glue on it over. So now I have a clean surface and that glue mess is contained as I move on to the next one. All right, this time I'm gonna work really fast and we may wash this more than once, so I'm Wow, yep, I'm moving fast. Really wish I could move that quickly in real life. Let's talk our way through it once more. All right, the process begins with marking where I wanna put the collage element. Spreading the glue on with the brush, working from the center out. Gently laying it down in place, and then using my folding bone um, to burnish. Remembering that pressure is what's gonna help make sure that this element stays glued down and does not pop off. Okay. So a few steps to work through, but I think you guys got it now. All right, I really want these elements to say collage down and I want my paper to remain flat. We've added moisture. Even though it wasn't a lot of glue, the glue still adds moisture. So I'm taking a couple of pieces of wax paper. I use wax paper because glue does not stick to wax paper. The wax paper goes down and then I add some heavy books um, from around the house to help hold things down and dry flat. 
We refer to this process as drying something under restraints. So the wax paper, you don't have to use it if you're confident there's no excess glue there. Um, helps pr protect and keep the book from sticking. And then the pressure from the book makes sure that the paper dries nice and flat and smooth because it can't buckle and warp as the moisture goes away. So I put one side under a heavy book. I'm grabbing another heavy book for the other side. And now I will let that set. So how long does it need to set to thoroughly dry? It just depends on the temperature and the humidity. It's good to let it set for at least an hour or two. You can always lift the books and gently touch with the back side of your hand. If it feels cool, it needs a little longer to thoroughly dry. Okay, so here is my finished collage portion of this project. You can see it on the paper and you can see where I'm going next. And this is where we'll go in the next video. I'm doing some thumbnails. I'm working through ideas of how I can use drawing to connect these two elements and create a finished piece of art. Let's see where we go.